Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about tolerance and tolerance stack up and why it matters for your 3D designs. So in a lot of the content we do on this channel, we focus on freeform modeling or organic surfacing or things that don't typically need tight tolerances, things like 3D printed parts. However, if you're designing mechanical parts, and I've had this question come up a few times, then you really do need a good understanding of what tolerance and tolerance stack up means. So what we're going to be doing today is looking at some basic examples to try to better understand what tolerance means and why it's important when you're designing a mechanical part, let's say something that's going to be CNC machined. So we've got two examples. I'll put them in the description of the video if you want to play with them. They're not fully built out designs, but they'll give us a good idea or good concept of what it means to think about tolerances and tolerance stack up. So the first one that we're looking up here is the tolerance stack up part. And this has a couple of sketches. So we've got a base shape that's got two simple dimensions. We've got base holes and we've got the plate holes, the plate that goes on top of it. Now, when we think about tolerance and tolerance stack up, what we're really talking about is the variation in the size and location of features and what that means for the overall assembly. Now, as smaller parts, the tolerances need to be a bit tighter. Larger parts, we may need to add in a bit more slop or tolerance for things to bolt together. And especially if parts are getting welded or if large parts are getting machined, we really need to have a good understanding of what these numbers mean. Now, typical tolerance values for machined parts, and we're working in the imperial system in this video, Generally, 0 0.05 inches or 50 thou for parts that have one or two decimal places. So that would be like 0.5 would be plus 0 0.05, so 0.55 or 0.45. When we're talking about three decimal places, then typically what you end up getting into is something like 10 thou or 0 0.01 inches. Now, these are, again, let's just say basic tolerances or default tolerances that you'll see. With things like angles, you may see plus or minus one degree, and we'll talk about that in the second example of the assembly. So when we're looking at this part, I have dimensioned it different than I would as if I were modeling it just from start. So for example, when we begin to model something, we'll use things like horizontal and vertical constraints. We will build out parts with symmetry. But in reality, when we have a manufactured part like this that has four bolt holes, it has four tapped holes on the bottom plate and four passing holes on the top, each of these dimensions needs to have a reference location. While we're not going to get into GD&T or geometric dimensioning and tolerancing in this video, it is important to note that not only the size and location of these features will have some sort of tolerance associated with it, but you may also see things like a position tolerance or a parallel tolerance between edges. These things are represented in different symbols and datums on the detailed drawing. We're going to kind of skate past that topic for this video, and we're going to focus primarily on just these dimensions, the simple dimensions of what it means. So first, you'll notice that everything is dimensioned from this bottom left-hand corner. I'm using this as my datum or the ordinate location for every dimension. And again, this is different than how I would model this part for manufacture, but it's important that we understand how these dimensions move. So if we take a default tolerance of 0 0.05 inches or 50 thou, then this value can be anywhere from 0.45 all the way up to 0.55. And you can see that in this case, that puts the hole outside, or in this case, the tapped hole, outside of the passing hole that the screw needs to go through. And that's just a single dimension. If we happen to keep this at two decimal places, 0.63, then we would go, let's just say plus 0.05. It would go vertical that dimension. And let's say we change it to minus 0.05. You can kind of see how the hole is floating around in there. Now, if we go to the feature that created the passing holes, we have a close fit tolerance. And a close fit tolerance is going to give us a, this is a quarter inch bolt, so it's gonna give us a dimension of 0.257 for the diameter of these holes. Now I'm using the lead desk mat, I've got the uh, hole clearance chart on here. And for a standard fit hole for a quarter inch, we've got 0.266. So if we go to a normal or standard fit, it increases the diameter of those holes. Now, if you go to a loose fit, that's actually gonna take it all the way up to 0.281, but you can see even at a loose fit, we still are not completely encasing that tapped hole on the bottom. It could be way out of position. 
And even with this loose fit value, what we haven't talked about is the position of the hole on this plate. So for example, uh, this hole could be minus 0.05 to the left, and it could be plus 0.05 vertically. Uh, so you can see these are within manufacturer tolerance. If you sent this part out to be machined and you gave them a standard tolerance of plus or minus 0.05 inches, you could get this thing back well outside of the possibility of actually being able to assemble it. And that's just a single hole. This is a compounding problem where if we add 0.05 to this one, and let's say that we subtract 0.05 here, and we subtract 0.05 here, you can see that it's starting to shift all these holes into a situation where they likely are not gonna be able to be assembled. Now, this is again, a very simple example, but hopefully it highlights the problem. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna revert some of these, put them back, get it back to where it's originally located. There we go. All right, so that was a basic example looking just at hole diameters and hole positions. Now keep in mind, we didn't really mess with the diameter too much other than going into this feature and looking at close, normal, and loose tolerances. It is also important to note that even with threaded holes, there is an associated tolerance that's listed in this class. So typically class 1B and 2B are gonna be fairly loose or standard, and 3B would be a more precision fit. Now, I'm gonna leave a link in the description to the uh, uh, to this website called Engineer's Edge. Uh, this is actually a pretty helpful website. They've got a lot of different uh, sections where they talk about tolerances and manufacturing and so on. Uh, so I use this website all the time. I come to it for different things. But in this specific case, the link in the description, it has a little chart here where you can pick, let's say, quarter 20, 3B. And you can see that the minor diameter is 0.196. That's the same for all the different classes. And the major diameter can be as big as 0 0.2067. Uh, however, if we go back to like a, point, a 1B tolerance or class, then it goes up to 0 0.207. So it, it's a variation with basically how loose the screw can fit. Now, if you go to a 2B, what you'll notice here is that the minor and major diameters are the same, but you'll notice that the pitch diameter is going to change. And essentially what this does, again, it makes the bolt a tighter or looser fit. So this all comes into play when you're designing your parts in Fusion here. If you're using something like SolidWorks or Inventor, you do actually have the ability to include those tolerance values and you have some automated tolerance stack up features where it can say, you know, this is outside of the realm of being able to be assembled. Okay, so that first example, simple bolt holes, just taking a look at their position in 2D and a little bit about their diameters. But what happens when we have an assembly? Now, this is, again, very simple example that hopefully will drive the point home. And if we do a section analysis and take a look at this, we've got a bracket, we've got a roller, and we've got a pin that goes through it that has a small hole on the end for a cotter pin or a clevis or something to hold it in place. All of these parts are gonna be subject to tolerances. Now the pin itself, generally if you buy something like a ground pin, it's gonna be held to a really high tolerance. So that's generally not gonna be your problem. And in many cases, if you get a pin that has uh, a specific tolerance range, you'll notice it's plus zero and minus a certain value, usually three or four decimal places. Uh, and so the pins themselves are generally not the problem, it's the manufactured parts that we're dealing with. So let's take a look at a couple of the manufactured parts. The roller already was designed with a 0 0.05 or 50 thou gap from left to right, as well as in the diameter. But what if the parts start to grow or shrink? How does this affect the fit? So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna mess with the bracket. So I'm gonna go to the bracket sketches. The first sketch we have, we're gonna right click and show the dimensions. We've got a couple of dimensions, again, that we wouldn't typically have if we were designing this part properly in Fusion. But in order to identify the tolerances, I put some angle dimensions in here instead of a perpendicular constraint. So remember, a tolerance for an angle, sort of a, a default one, is going to be plus or minus one degree. So if I made this 91 degrees, for example, Notice how it's shifting the roller. Uh, and that's because the way that the roller, the way everything is designed in here, it's going to affect the joints that we used. And if we do the same thing over here, make this 91 degrees, uh, what you'll notice is that we're starting to 
close in the gap at the bottom section of the roller because these sides are no longer parallel with the end of the roller. So this is one potential problem that we can get into. And as the roller begins to grow, then we'd run into an issue or an area where the roller is starting to bind up. I'm gonna go ahead and put these back to 90. And we'll put that one back to 90 as well. And we wanna talk a little bit about the bracket dimensions. Now remember, everything is gonna be referenced off some sort of datum. So let's say this 0.25 can grow as much as 0 0.05. If it grows that much, sort of a standard default loose tolerance that you could have, the roller no longer fits. Uh, so instantly, we, we begin to have a problem. Now, if we set this at a tighter tolerance, say 0 0.01 or 10 thou, we've got a very small gap, but the parts will still fit. So as you're designing these mechanical parts, you need to think about where you can have a larger gap and parts can be spaced out a bit more and where you may need a tighter gap. So again, if the quarter inch dimension here added 0.05 on both sides, then we're instantly going to run into a problem because now the parts no longer fit. Not only do they not fit, but they overlap. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at the roller as the example. So with the roller, we've got a sketch. I'm going to go ahead and show the dimensions. And you can see that we've got the diameter. So we've got an outside diameter of 0.95. And again, this already was designed with the thought in mind that, hey, I've got a 0 0.05 tolerance. I'll just undersize it 0 0.05 and everything will be fine. Well, if this gets plus 0 0.05, if it's on the upper end of that tolerance and the bottom has that added bit. So in, instead of being quarter inch, it's now 0.3. Well, now again, we're overlapping and the assembly is not going to work. Uh, with the center of this, typically when we're talking about a, a long hole in a part like this, something typically would be bored or reamed, which is generally held to a tighter tolerance. So it's not going to be plus or minus 0.05, but you would likely give it a tolerance of like plus 0 0.002 or something like that. So it would more, more than likely it would be fine in these instances because for a long hole in the center of that, we wouldn't typically drill it. A drilling operation may be okay, but it's gonna require something that has a tighter tolerance. So we also have some tolerance associated with the overall length of the roller. All right, so currently it's at 0.345. Again, it was designed with that sort of plus or minus 0.05 in mind. But if we add 0.05, once again, it grows to fill up that gap. So as your parts start to reach the extents of their defined tolerances, and now this could be in the other direction, right? It could be minus or it could be plus. Once they start to reach the extent of these tolerances, then parts either fit really loosely and poorly, or they end up having problems where now they don't fit at all. They can't fit together, they're too tight. So when you start to have mechanical assemblies or areas where you are thinking about these tolerances, these manufacturing tolerances for CNC parts specifically, then you really need to spend some time and identify the intent of your assembly, how it needs to operate or work, and how these tolerances are going to affect putting it together. Now, as I mentioned, tools like Inventor and SolidWorks and other CAD systems have the ability to add the tolerances directly into a parameters table. So you can give it a tolerance value and you can set it to display the part in the upper or lower ranges. And there are tolerance stackup tools that we have access to to simplify this process. Now in Fusion, we don't currently have those. So you need to manually think about these as you're creating your designs. Dimensioning designs so that you can go back and play around with these tolerances is not something that typically works well because it's just not how we design these parts because then they don't update repeatedly when we change dimensions. But having a fundamental understanding of these little changes here, how moving the holes around affect the size are going to help you design better parts, parts that will fit when you get them installed or when you get them manufactured and sent to you. Now, there's always the possibility to use tools like move or press pull, and you can resize and move things around. So for example, we can use the move tool and say, I want to move this hole this direction 0 0.05. That's one way that we can do this after the fact and see whether or not these tolerances are applicable. Uh, so what I would do in a case like this is I would say, 
0.05 for a bolt hole location is likely too loose of a tolerance. I would probably set it at something like 0.01. This should be easy to achieve on most CNC machines with standard tooling and not really anything special. Once you start to get down into three decimal places or four decimal places, that's where you start to really incur a lot of cost in the tooling and the fixturing and the amount of time it takes to manufacture these parts. So if you can design your parts with some sort of semi-loose tolerance, then they'll be easier to manufacture and you'll know they'll fit. Uh, it's much easier when parts bolt together and they don't have to move or things don't have to move when, when they're assembled. But if they do, spend a little bit of time thinking about it up front, figuring out how your parts can move in 3D how much gap you can live with for your assembly. And maybe there are specific parts that you can get like extra washers or shims that you can add into your assembly to take up for those extra tolerances if they do occur. Now, as I said, we're gonna be doing some more content on things like CNC machining and mechanical parts. So I wanted to just do a little bit of a primer to better identify just some basics around tolerances. Now, if there's something you think I missed, then please leave a comment and let me know. And if you want to see more of this kind of content with mechanical design and some more of these topics around dimensioning, tolerancing, and GD&T, then leave me a comment as well and, and let me know what you want to see. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.